I'm going to be honest. If you were looking for some sort of sign as to whether or not to get this book, clicking on this video is your sign to get this book. Hello, beautiful friends and book lovers. I hope that you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Heather and here at Heather's Book Review, I typically love to read and review mysteries and thrillers, but I will read just whatever I'm wanting to read. So those are not my only reviews. I do not only review that genre. It is just my favorite. Um, if you've been here a minute, you may have seen that I've been a little bit more absent than usual. Um, our son had a pretty major injury at his daycare about middle of May and has recently, now middle of July, just fully recovered from it. So I'm not going to go too much into it, but it kind of, you know, turned our world upside down for the last two months. So that kind of explains why I've been um, absent here. Not absent, but you know, just why I didn't post a June wrap up and stuff like that, which by the way, I am combining my June and July wrap up together. So it'll be a longer video with quite a lot of books, but Yes, I'm happy to say everything is going great now. Everybody is healed. Everyone is healthy. He just turned two in June. So like, yes, definitely feeling blessed and grateful. But if you were wondering where the heck I've been, there you go. Okay, so first off, massive shout out to Simon & Schuster Audio and Libro FM for giving me the chance, the wonderful opportunity to listen to one of my favorite author's new books, None of This is True, Lisa Jewell. I'm gonna send you this video because it would mean the world to me if you watched it. This is an amazing book. Oh my gosh, you guys. Lisa Jewell kicked it out of the park with this book. You know how you have like your top three books that you always recommend to people? Like especially maybe if someone isn't that big of a reader and they're looking for recommendations or maybe they're looking to get back into like reading. For me, I always have like my top three books. And those books are The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelitis, Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, or really any of Alice Feeney's books. And then it was always Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Those were like the top three that I'm like, oh, if you're looking for a thriller, check out these. Cause like, you're not gonna be disappointed. But, Honestly, none of this is true is like scooching then she was gone out now because like it's still amazing but like this book is so good and like if I had to pick a favorite of Jules, it would be none of this is true like I cannot wait to talk about it further. It is so good. So I'm going to try my best to get this video edited and published for this book's pub day. So you guys know the drill. I always do a non-spoiler review for the first part of the video and then a timestamp in the description um, for a chat with spoilers for those of us who have read the book or you can even save this video and then after you've read it, come back and just hear all my thoughts on all the deets. But I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the non-spoiler part of this video. First off, on my rating scale, it's a go get this book now for sure. Like, for sure. It's honestly so good. I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis for you um, if you're interested in hearing what the book is about. So if you don't want to hear that, then just skip like 30 seconds ahead or just wait until you see my eyes looking back up on the screen. But it says, this is courtesy of Goodreads, by the way. Lisa Jewell returned with a new psychological thriller about a woman who finds herself the subject of her own popular true crime podcast. Celebrating her 45th birthday at her local pub, popular podcaster Alex Summers crosses paths with an unassuming woman called Josie Fair. Josie, it turns out, is also celebrating her 45th birthday. They are, in fact, birthday twins. A few days later, Alex and Josie bump into each other again, this time outside Alex's children's school. Josie has been listening to Alex's podcasts and thinks she might be an interesting subject for her series. She is, she tells Alex, on the cusp of great changes in her life. Josie 
Josie's life appears to be strange and complicated, and although Alex finds her unsettling, she can't quite resist the temptation to keep making the podcast. Slowly, she starts to realize that Josie has been hiding some very dark secrets, and before she knows it, Josie has inveigled her way into Alex's life and into her home. But as quickly as she arrived, Josie disappears. Only then does Alex discover that Josie has left a terrible and terrifying legacy in her wake, and that Alex has become the subject of her own true crime podcast with her life and her family's lives under mortal threat. Okay, um, side note, I'm actually confused of when the pub date is because Amazon says that it's August 8th, which I thought. And then if you go on Goodreads though, it says expected publication is sorry i'm on my computer um is july 20th so <laughs> i'm just gonna like triple check but it's one of the yeah this that's weird oh wait here expected publication july 20th expected publication august 8th it literally has both but i do believe it is august 8th not the 20th august 8th so Pre-order this book because you're going to want it in your life. It's so good. It's so good. Typically for me with like the podcast thrillers, that's been done a lot lately. So when I heard about, you know, the book and that it like had a podcast feel, I was like, eh, like I don't necessarily love that. Like for instance, the Night Swim um, had like a podcast kind of feel and I was like, eh, like, I don't know. This works. And like you guys know, I said I listened to this book. The narration, the narrators, amazing. Amazing. And there's also like a part of the book that has like a Netflix kind of like documentary style with it too. So like when you're listening to the book, it's so like they have like different little like um not like songs, but like sounds that like indicate whether it's part of Alex's podcast that's mentioned in the book description or if it's part of the Netflix documentary so like I was not confused at all when I was listening to like the story or like am I listening to the documentary am I listening to the podcast like I was never once like what the heck is going on so that was great if you want to listen to it on um audio like via audiobook I highly highly recommend the story is just so good like you don't know what to expect when you're reading it and you don't know the truth about a lot of the characters in the story. It is a dark book too. Um, I think that's why I really liked Then She Was, why I like, not past tense, why I like Then She Was Gone, another Lisa Jewell book, um, because it was like so dark and twisted. And this book is also very dark and twisted. And like, I just loved it. I was hooked. I was so, so hooked. I cannot recommend it enough. It is one of the top books that I have read this year, especially for thrillers. So just get it, just buy it, just pre-order it. I'll put a link in the description box below if you're interested. It's so good, but I really can't say much more um, with the non-spoiler part other than it's like, it's just a fast paced read. Um, it's a great listen if you want to, you know, listen to it. <laughs> Don't really know what I was gonna say there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, the story is so riveting. But yeah, I am gonna go ahead and get into the non-spoiler part of this video. Um, so when you do read the book, um, come back and watch this so you can listen to all of my nitty gritty thoughts on like what happens in the book. Uh, but yeah, let's just go ahead and start chatting with some spoilers. So I actually buddy read this with one of my friends that I have made from Bookstagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I probably already put the handle up, but it's the same. It's um, just at Heather's book review. But it was so much fun reading this with her because 
Anytime I was like typing my thoughts to her, I was also adding them to my doc here, which is always what I look at when I'm filming. Um, but basically, I was just shocked. I was shocked that Josie and Walter, like she met him when she was 13. And I was like, what? What? You find out that Walter has that previous family that he left for Josie and you're like, for a 13 year old? Like what is, what is happening? You find out they have two kids together, Roxy and Aaron. There's like a little bit of a, like, I don't know, something that indicates that Aaron eats baby food like early on in the book, but she's like in her twenties and you're like, what? Like, what is the story behind that? Like I was so intrigued. And then we're introduced to Alex and Nathan. And I just thought Nathan was like unfaithful this whole book. I felt that Alex just like let him off the hook so many times and she was just like so forgiving. Like he's the father of your children, your young children. He's out partying and drinking all the time. You can't get a hold of him. Like he needs to be a partner, you know, for you. I don't know. Reading his parts, I was like so annoyed a lot of the time because I'm like, he's just such an annoying character. Um, but hearing those snippets from like Josie's past of like how that one, I think she was a school secretary that Alex was talking to. And she's like, yeah, the family was just weird. Like one of the daughters had a broken arm and it was like suspected that it like happened at home and just like all this stuff. Like I, you know, these are a lot of examples of why I was hooked with the book so quickly because I wanted to know the truth behind all of these stories and like, you know, how they were just, how they came about. So the way my notes are organized, I organize them into quarters as I was reading the book. So this next chunk is my thoughts of 25 to uh, 50%. And I just, I was just dying to know like what is going on with Josie's daughter, specifically Aaron. I was more hooked with Aaron because like I knew that Roxy left and I was more intrigued with the daughter who's still living at home, who's eating the baby food, who never comes out of her room. So then Walter and Alex go to, or no, sorry, Walter and Josie go to Alex's house for the dinner and he has that alone time with Alex for a second. And he's like, you know, you don't know that you're being controlled until it's too late. And he, I thought he was being truthful. Like we all know something's going on with, with Josie, right? Like she's stealing stuff out of the garbage, which is weird behavior. She has weird behavior, you know, odd tendencies, whatever. Like I, I wasn't ruling her out, but I still was pegging him for like the real weirdo. Then there's bits of, you know, Nathan still going out and drinking. I made a note on here that his friend Giovanni like just enables that behavior in his drinking. And I wrote, he needs to get some new friends, some friends who won't enable his behavior. Then, you know, there's that massive fight between Walter and Josie after the dinner. And I'm like, these guys have no respect for each other. Like, why are they still together? You know, it feels like they're they're together because they're forced to be together. Like, there's a reason that they're together. Is it because of these, like, past secrets that she, like, keeps hinting about? Like, I was just, I was so confused. I'm like, why be with someone if you're just screaming at them all the time? Like, I don't know. Then I wrote that I think she beat herself up and that it wasn't Walter because I'm like, listen, this is an elderly man. He didn't, from what we've learned so far in the book, I wasn't getting like an aggressive vibe from him, but she seemed crazy enough to where she would like beat herself up and then like blame it on him. So yeah, I don't know. I, I pegged her as just like beating herself up and then trying to make herself look like the victim. It felt like Josie was just trying to make it so that her and Alex were both like against their husbands. Like she wanted her to hate Nathan as much as she hated Walter, you know? That's like the vibe that I was getting. So 
those are my thoughts for the first 50% of the book. <sighs> about halfway through, we're given that bombshell about Roxy's friend, Brooke, and how Brooke was apparently groomed by Walter and then goes missing. And then Josie says that Walter goes into Aaron's room at night, abuses her. She's hinting that he sexually abuses her, but that she doesn't do anything about it and just puts in her headphones. When I read that part, I was like, what? And there's just, you know, more and more and more to the book that is further proving that Josie just wants Alex to like hate Nathan and just like hate their marriage. And I was just getting, I was almost like, does she just hate men? Like just at this point that like, does she just hate men? And she just, you know, she wants, clearly she wants Alex all to herself in this weird way, but she wants her to almost be as miserable as she is. That's how I interpreted it. Then there's obviously that scene with the hotel room being trash, but they find one of Nathan's business cards. And I was like, didn't Josie at some point earlier in the book, like steal one of his business cards? Like, you know, is she behind the whole like hotel room situation? And then now it's my thoughts of 75% of the way of the book, sorry, through the book to finish. Okay. When we read that there was a customized like chair that Aaron was strapped to with like le those leather straps, I literally was like, what the fuck? What is, I was just, oh my gosh. It was so much to take in. I'm going to be honest. While Walter, you know, we find out he's actually gaming with Aaron at night. He's not abusing her. You know, he is part of her stream that, you know, he's part of why her stream is so popular, right? Like the viewers love their banter together and everything. He doesn't obviously get off scot-free as like a character. Like he still obviously was with Josie when she, you know, met her at 13, was with her, I believe when they were like 15. Like he doesn't get off scot-free for sure. But he's not, you know, like this whole time we're being led to believe that like, he not only did he like abuse Josie, but he's also like abusing his girls and he wasn't like they both actually had really fond memories of him. Then we find out Brooke's remains were in, I think a car in the garage that Walter had. So she killed Brooke, she killed Walter, she killed Nathan. Did she kill anybody else? Like. Maybe, probably. Then you find out that Aaron was the one that actually like beat Josie because she was trying to help out Walter a little bit. And then the open ending a little bit, at least that's how I kind of consider it. So Josie says that Roxy is the one to have actually killed Brooke and then said like something like, if you tell, I'll just tell everyone it's you. But I don't know if I believe that. And that's what I love about this book because you can go one of two ways. You can go, Josie's, a, you know, a manipulator. She lies. You know, she wants to be the victim. She could easily just as well be lying about this. Or you could think the route of, did Roxy get some of Josie's craziness her evilness did she really actually kill Brooke I don't know so it's you know it's cool it's up for interpretation I guess I didn't really think too much on it but if I had to pick I think it's almost a little bit more fun to kind of wonder if Roxy is also kind of like crazy like that so I don't know if I had to pick I'd probably go that route just because I think it would maybe make for a fun sequel or something. But yeah, those are all of my thoughts on this wonderful, amazing book. I loved it so much. 
Please let me know in the comments below what you thought about this book, if we had any of the same viewpoints, what you thought about that ending. How did you interpret that ending? And yeah, as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.